This is Brad Clayton with the January 2024 Puzzle Duck Golf Thought of the Month. Thank you very much for watching. Hope everyone's doing well. Had a smooth slide into the new year. Also, I hope you're looking forward to playing a lot of golf and a lot of good golf on top of that. A couple of things I think you should keep in mind when you're going to play this year and every year thereafter. These are just simple basic ideas or, or opinions of mine that I think we should uphold relatively high standards for. Number one is your dress code. Be aware of the dress code of the facility that you're going to. Everyone has a little bit different dress code. I say a little bit different. Some may vary from others. Uh, typically when you go to a golf course, you can wear shorts, slacks, collared shirts, and or something of this nature which has a collar. I think most of these are okay. I haven't had any trouble with that uh, in, since I've been wearing them. Uh, things that are typically frowned upon, t-shirts, blue jeans, not always, but uh, at some facilities uh, you can wear them, but uh, most are going to frown upon that and or not allow you to play. Uh, so just be aware of the dress code of the facility that you're going to. If you don't know what it is, simply call the golf shop and ask, and I'm sure they'll be happy to tell you about that. Number two, when you walk into a clubhouse, take your hat off. Take your cover off your head. Be a lady or a man, doesn't matter. Just take your hat off when you walk in, even on bad hair days. Uh, I learned that lesson a long time ago, back in, I think it was 1994 at Carnoustie Golf Club. I removed my cover very quickly. Uh, he called it a cap. Uh, the barkeep taught me a quick lesson, and I was quick to adhere to his his wisdom. Number three, uh, listening to music on the golf course, okay, listen if you like it, but try to make sure that the whole golf course doesn't have to listen to what you're listening to. Also, the other people in your group may not want to hear it. So just keep it at a low level so that you can enjoy it, but try not to make everyone else listen to what your particular preference is. Another thing that we'd like to do is make sure that that phone ringer is not on when you're playing. Don't let the phone ring off the hook while you're playing and have a lot of conversations. If you absolutely have to have a conversation with someone, do so discreetly and try to keep your phone on silent so that you're not disturbing other players and also distracting other players by talking about your business or whatever it is you may be talking about. Try to prepare for that beforehand. If you do have to talk to someone, text but keep your phone on silent so you're not disturbing everyone else around you. Learn the rules of golf and the etiquette that goes along with playing. If you do so, you will enjoy the game more. It also will help you in certain cases, but it also make it more enjoyable for the people playing with you and also have everyone playing on an equal field. The rules are not as complicated as they may once have been. They're relatively easy to follow. Uh, you do have to spend a little time to learn those. And the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to go to usga.org website. Watch the videos on the rules, the basic rules that you need to know, and also some basic etiquette videos that go all over what you should and shouldn't be doing when you're on a golf course. Take you an hour, maybe, maybe an hour and a half at the most to watch these videos and pick up some knowledge. You probably don't know the rules as good as you think you do. So take a minute, watch those and enjoy them. They're very, very informative and, and fun to watch. Be aware of the proximity that you have to other people on the golf course when it comes to your conversations, when it comes to your language. Also be aware of the people that live on the golf course. They could be on their porch. They could be in their yard doing yard work. Who knows? Could be a kid. It could be a lady reading a book. Just be aware of your language and be aware of the conversation that you have and the level at which you're having it. If you want to do so, that's fine, but do so at a level at which only you and the people that you're talking to can hear you. It has a big impact on, uh, as far as I'm concerned, on the people around you. Uh, your voice does travel. That is a fact. So just be mindful of who is in your listening distance. If you live on a golf course, by the way, expect golf balls to hit your golf course, your house. Expect some language on occasions. It's just the way it is. But uh, when it comes to uh, getting hit by a golf ball on your golf uh, on your house, that, that's going to happen. If you don't like that kind of thing, you're probably living in the wrong place. Those are some basic, simple things that I think you should keep in mind when you play. There are a whole lot more things that could go into this, and I could go down a rabbit hole when it comes to, to, to tradition 
and the standards in which I think we're, we, we should be living up to. Uh, I think our standards and traditions are getting lost in this game and in society as a whole, to be honest with you. But I'd like to see things held a little bit higher. I hope that we can maintain the tradition of this game that has made it what it is and has made it become such a special game. It has impacted many, many lives in a positive way, and uh, I'd like to continue to see it do so. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video. If you have any statements that you'd like to make regarding this, do so in the comments below. You can also like this video, share this video, or you can email me at brad at puzzle.golf.com, and I'm happy to have that discussion with anyone. Hope you have a great day. We'll look forward to seeing you in February.